All right. All right. Let's settle back down. Let's get this young man up. Man, he's coming with us every Friday in the month of uh, March. And, you know, he is a backbone and posture man. Told me he's not going to get in this bed until after he hit the next position, R.D. And I guess he's about tired of sleeping on that floor by now. But he's he's, he's he's moving that ball, I tell you what. Without further ado, let's give a warm welcome to none other than backbone and posture himself, the great Mr. Sam Foster. All right, all right, all right. Thank you, everyone, for being on the call this morning. As I always say, you could have been anywhere, but you stuck with me for a few minutes, so deal with it. <laughs> Today is Friday, 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 fun Friday, and we're going to do just that. We're going to do just that. All right. Uh, thank everybody for being on the call. I see um, Mrs. Uh, Renato on the call. Thank you, ma'am. Of course, for you, Mr. Thomas, for your wonderful platform. Uh, Mr. Jabri behind the scenes. We're going to go ahead and get this ball rolling. So, Mr. Jabri, if you're ready, play that first clip. For me, sir. Maybe it's my fault. Maybe I led you to believe it was easy when it wasn't. Maybe I made you think my highlights started at the free throw line and not in the gym. Maybe I made you think that every shot I took was a game winner. That my game was built on flash and not fire. Maybe it's my fault that you didn't see that failure gave me strength. That my pain was my motivation. Maybe I led you to believe that basketball was a God-given gift and not something I worked for every single day of my life. Maybe I destroyed the game. Or maybe you're just making excuses. In the words of Mr. Thomas, wow, wow, wow. Yes, ma'am, yes, sir. I specifically chose that slide, ladies and gentlemen, because look at what he said at the end. Maybe you're just making excuses. Woo! All right, guys, let's put your seatbelt on because I had a total message for you guys, as you can see. And as always, the good man upstairs just totally threw my message in the wind. And I'm scrambling like eggs, trying to regroup and reanalyze. As you guys know, I try not to come to you guys with any mess. I try to fact find. I try to do my research before I come on this call because I think it is so important. All right? If you're taking notes, if you're taking notes, I want you to write down, are you scared of yourself? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Are you scared of yourself? That's right, Jackie Black. I thought about it, too. Looked like somebody had hit me with a ton of bricks. I thought about it, too. I'm like, are you sure you want me to put, write this down or put this up for these people? And he was sure. Are you scared of yourself? Now, we're going to go on a little journey. I got a long way to go in a short time to get there, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go back to Tuesday night when Mr. Thomas came to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and I, too, had to make a pivot. Ironically, me and Mr. Thomas had gotten there early, and I tried to get to a location early. That's a hint for somebody. Get there early. Get there early. Don't meet your people there. Beat your people there. I try to get at a venue at least an hour and a half to two hours early. I know it's not possible for everybody. That's not my point of saying it. To try to get there as early as possible. Why is that, Sam? It's because you find out a lot about people that you have not even invited, especially if you're in a hotel setting in the lobby, in the lobby. I repeat, in the lobby. Why do you say that, Sam? Because you're going to get motivation in the lobby. You're going to get education in the lobby. I probably got eight referrals in the lobby within an hour and a half. That's no joke. And I'm going to go over how I did this so people can understand how this actually works. I actually was um, 
sitting there and making some phone calls, last minute phone calls, trying to make sure people were on their way and whatnot. And I actually saw Mr. Thomas taking a power nap. And I looked over at him, you know, as, as we were talking, he said a few things and then he stretched out. And I was talking within my phone. So I looked to the right and he was actually taking a power nap, not a cat nap, a power nap. Guy his status, trust me, he takes power naps. But watch this, guys. And he don't know I'm going to say this, but I'm going to say this. I, I don't think he minds it. If he does, edit it, Jabri. <laughs> he said he had been up since 2.30 in the morning. Now, this is a senior vice president, guys. He had been up since 2.30 in the morning. And I was like, wow, 2.30 in the morning? I know sometimes he gets up at 5, but I'm like, 2.30? So when he explained what he was doing, I'm thinking, whoa. Then I heard God say, yeah, are you scared of yourself? He asked me, was I scared of myself? And I'm sitting here thinking, that have anything to do with him taking a power nap and this, that, and the other, but this is the thing, guys. Sometimes to get what you want, you have to be willing to do what you have not done. Let me repeat that. In order to get what you want, you have to be willing to do what you have not done. And sometimes that's getting up early. Yeah, but I'm not a senior vice president, but that's the reason why. Now, I'm talking to me too, guys. I'm not going to talk to me. This is not a, a, a gripe session. This is not a, a browbeating session. This, this is me looking in the mirror. Because I looked over at him and I'm thinking, 30 plus years, guys, 30 plus years in this game. And he's willing to get up at 2.30 in the morning. Don't have to be doing this. But he's just as invigorated today as he was 30 plus years ago. And he's a senior vice president. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Somebody didn't get that. He gets up at, he got up at 2.30 in the morning to come to Dallas to meet with us. He's a senior vice president. He's been at the top of two network marketing companies. He's been featured in Success from Home magazine 10 years in a row consecutively. I think he may know a little bit about success. So as I'm looking at him take this power nap, it's swirling in my head as if I'm a guest and not an IBO. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. March the 1st, and I'm talking about today. We need to do a reset, guys. We need to do a reset. March the 1st is a reset. March the 1st is a reset. March the 1st is a reset. Why is that? Because if we want to get to senior vice president, and that's the goal for everybody, not only is it doable, not only is it possible, but it can be done. Why is that? Because somebody's going to get there. And somebody will get there out of this group. And then I thought about it again. Well, even if you don't get there at the time you think you should get there, what about regional director? What about RVP? What? All of these places and things are possible. Why? But well, we got to do a reset. We got to do a reset. We got to do a reset. And this is the reset, guys. This is the challenge and the reset. And I'm talking to me, too. I'm looking at the man in the mirror, for lack of a better word. But this is the reset, guys. What are you doing now that you need to reset yourself on, that you know you need to reset yourself on? Not calling anybody out. Now you don't have to put your hand up. You don't have to hit the button to put the, none, none of that. You only have to say this to yourself. What is it that I need to do extra that I am not doing? Yeah, I know the convention coming up and all this and that. I get all of that. But remember, guys, the people that's going to be walking across the stage to get all these accolades, remember, they did all of this before they got on the stage. In other words, we don't need to go to the convention, watch this, guys, and get high for two days. Get high. And then all of a sudden, 
Sunday evening, we back to business as normal. Now, the reason I say that is because I've been hearing individuals say this from Monday all the way to today. So it's not like I'm just saying it myself. And I'm also saying it to myself. We need to do a reset. Now, watch this. When I, when I was in the lobby, I met a young lady, probably in her mid-40s, early 50s. She was a bank president. Let me show you how the lobby works a lot of times, guys. Bank president. She had her team on the other side of the lobby meeting with them. Let me show you how this works for corporate America, for those of you who don't understand corporate America. When they send all these corporate executives to these hotels, they do that for a reason. Either it's a retreat or they're getting ready to handle some business in another location, but they'll send a bunch of them there. And they did in this case. Now, I'm sitting there and I'm watching them as they sit down. Now, Mr. Thomas is still asleep. I hadn't left off Mr. Thomas. He's still asleep. But I'm watching all this traffic. I hadn't said anything yet. I'm trying to peek, trying to get an angle on different people. So watch this. I watch her sit down and I watch other people come around her. So I said to myself, she must be the leader. So when I walked over to her, I just started making small talk because they was just coming around. So it was more of a casual thing. I didn't interrupt or anything like that. I wasn't rude. So she said, yeah, I'm a bank president. She said what kind of, what bank it was. Big bank, but I won't put that out there. But um, I said, um, so where's your goals? Aha. Uh -huh. I wasn't intimidated. Aha. Uh -huh. I said, what do you want to do? Is this your final destination? Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Say it with a smile. So that way it breaks the ice. Say it with a smile. She said, what do you mean? I said, well, I do a little something, and that's my business partner over there taking a power nap. Watch this, guys. She said, really? I said, really? I said, now, I don't mean any harm. As if somebody was watching us, I leaned a little closer to her. I said, 18 millionaires, 20 years, right over there. 10 years. Success from Home magazine consecutively. Huh? I start throwing these accolades out now. The, 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 the guy is right over here. She said, really? I said, really? Watch this now. I said, at the top of two marketing companies. Two. One may be an accident, but two. There we go. So now the pressure's off of me. I put the light on somebody that's bigger than me, right? I let that be known. I never said anything about me. I never said anything about ACN. I never had to do that. The only thing I was responsible for was setting the stage for a gentleman who has made the peak on two network marketing companies the last 30 plus years. Now, I don't care who she was or what she was doing. She could have owned her own bank. She was at least wanting to be interested in who in the heck is he talking about, right? So long story short, Mr. Thomas finally gets up and I said, hey, got somebody I want you to meet. He comes over. He has a chit chat with her. Now her team is around her. Now I'm edifying Mr. Thomas around her team. Now, when I say her team, I don't know, five or six people at least. And people were steady coming because she's the bank president. See what I'm saying? These are her employees that's under her. So now I'm edifying this gentleman and they are standing around. Now I have her undivided attention. Now I got their undivided attention. Now when Mr. Thomas does this, I was doing this to the group because now I got their attention. Now they're trying to figure out who in the world is he talking about? So when Mr. Thomas finally sh shows up, now he has their undivided attention and I have already edified him. So now they're looking at him like Mount Rushmore. Get what I'm saying? Because I've already puffed him up. 
I puffed him up so good he could have he could have rolled back. <laughs> he could have rolled back on the Michelin man. Think about it. He was that puffed up. See, I puff him up like that when he come into my city. I'm gonna puff him up. So now I'm puffing him up before my people get there. Cause I'm I I'm not so concerned about my people that are coming. I'm concerned about who's there now. Who can I drop a nugget on? So that way when I drop that nugget on them, they'll walk away realizing they've been in the midst of greatness. Let me say that again, guys. They've been in the midst of greatness. Somebody who's tried and true through the fire. Because as I edified him, I let him know, you know. And uh, before that, I let him know, hey, you know, when he first started, he first started, you know, doing real estate. Watch this part. Watch this part, guys. He paid for it with a credit card back in the early 80s. See, I pay attention to Mr. Thomas so I can edify him on the spot. I can say a lot of things a lot of people may not be able to say about him because I watch it. So I'm saying these key points not only to let them know who's standing in front of them, but let them know, hey, this is the real deal. So as Mr. Thomas talked about himself a little bit, I noticed he kind of pulled back. But by the time he had pulled back, I gave myself a safety net, guys, and already given those individuals my business card. Why is that? Because the lady told me, she said, look, she said, I have a son get ready to go to college. So in other words, if you want this to be a safety net for you, this is possible. Because guess what, guys? Guess what I figured out? This is why I'm not intimidated. I don't care who I'm talking to. They still work for somebody. Mr. Thomas does not. They got a boss, including their boss has a boss. And she told me something I needed to know. Her son is getting ready to go off to college next year. In other words, guys, if she's not so much financially broke, she wants her time back and her freedom. Because she's out of town right now at the hotel. Her son may be somewhere playing football, basketball, baseball. She missing that. Oh, 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 oh. Let me stop, Mr. Tomac. You got to get this, guys. There's always something somebody will be missing if they work for somebody else. You got to be able to catch that. See, it may not be about the money to her right now, but let me flip the script a little bit, guys. Let me flip the script. Let me show you how it can be both at the same time. Because even though her financial situation might not be crazy today, it could be crazy tomorrow because she don't have residual income coming in, guys. She's still trading time for dollars. I don't care if she's on a salary. Now she's a bigger slave because she's on the salary, but let me get out of that. That's topic for another day. I'm sorry, Mr. Tom. Sorry, not sorry. But watch this part. She's still tied to a paycheck. So she still has to chase money instead of money chasing her. Residuals, residuals, residuals. Money should chase you. You should never take chase money. Residuals, residuals, residuals. And she does the essential services that we already do. So worst case scenario, I gave everybody my call. Everybody's going to look at my information, guys. Melissa Williams, they're going to look at it because they know it. They're human and they know it. Melissa Williams, they're human and they know it. Danny Payne and Alberta Canada, they're going to look at it because they know the That's a human trait. That's a good trait. Always have something in your pocket, guys. Jackie Black, always have something in your pocket. Kathleen Williams, always have something in your pocket. Rick K, all the way in Hawaii, have something in your pocket to give to them because documentation will always be the conversation. Watch that part, guys. After we left the conversation, now her head is swimming. Because number one, guys, she's not the biggest fish in the room. He is. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. She's not the biggest fish in the room anymore. Now she's paying attention now more than ever. And then I found some out, guys. You ever in the lobby with a bunch of those soup people? They get in that lobby every day after they little meetings and they drink a little bit. I'm not judging no disrespect, but they do that so often, guys, that they look forward to that. Remember now, they look forward to that. So they start making that a part of their evening. But that's that's the hamster on the wheel syndrome, guys. That's the hamster on the wheel syndrome. They're not making money for themselves and they're they looking forward to taking one back. 
But how does that push them forward? No, the big bosses are making all the money. They know what they're doing because some of the big bosses was in the lobby too. As long as they keep going and make money for the big bosses, they don't care if they drink themselves to death. No disrespect, but they don't care. As long as they get the job done. It knocks them off their focus. They're not working for themselves. They're working for somebody else. Watch these guys. And they'll be part of that group that uh, just happened about three months ago with this big company, uh, Brown, Brown. I'm not going to say the name, but uh, what can Brown do for you? 22,000 cuts. <clears throat> allegedly. Allegedly. Upper management. Why? Because their competition uh, 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 Amazon and the rest of them guys, they went on strike or they was getting ready to go on strike and they got nervous. So they tried to hold out. So the people, the teams just said, well, we're going to strike at, at 1159 at the end of the week. They call a bluff guys. They paid out, but they had to take a hit because all their clientele, a lot of their clientele went to the other, other competition because they didn't know if they was going to strike or not. Well, they didn't get that back. So now they got to make up that loss. If they got to make up that loss, guys. They got to cut up the top because that's why all the big money's being made. At least 22000 they had to cut them. Okay, Mr. Thomas, I'm going to get a little deeper. Watch this. We had a young man I invited out. He works for a major company. He's in the HR department. He's one of the big, big figureheads in the HR department. I bought him out that night. Let me show you how 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 concrete this conversation is he come out he say he wants something better for him and his family they moved him from uh new jersey in october okay he come out to the meet very excited he told us sitting in the meet now fireside chat he said oh i've been running all day he said we got an email mr thomas can bag me up from lying to recut me off he said i just got an email this morning she said i've been working like a dog i work 12 hour days he said we cut 18,000 jobs. We started today. If I'm lying, sue me, guys. He said we cut 18,000 people. He's the one that uh, drops the access, uh, shreds the cards, the whole nine, but he had to do it by the computer. It's all computerized, guys. You don't have to come back in the office no more. They don't want you to go postal. You ain't, you ain't coming up there to shoot them. You won't even get in the building. Woo! Woo! It's on the card. Jacket black. Woo! Watch it, watch it, Melissa, wait, boo. Watch it, watch it, watch it, hide it, boo. You won't even get in the building, guys. You won't get again. They're not going to let you go post on them, boo. And watch this, guys. They did it by email. Mr. Thomas had to say it twice. He's like, you kidding me? I said the same thing. They did it by email. Can you imagine waking up to go to work and you no longer have a job by email? Wait a minute. You could be standing at the door, guys. Wait to get in with your car. Boom, no access granted. Boom, no access granted. It's red, not green. Boom, it's red, not green. Boom, <laughs> you can't get in the building. Watch this, guys. The security at the front of the building is going. He's doing like, like he's riding the airplane. He's doing like this. <laughs> you going, I work here. Bob, you know me. I work here. Bob, what are you doing? <laughs> Check your email. Check your email. He's already been told at the front. Check your email. Watch this. There's usually a computer by the security desk. He's even been told by, by a computer. Tell them to check their email. They can't even get in the building. Check their email. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> They've been excused from their duties. Watch this, Mr. Thomas. They don't say fire. Excused from your duties. Wait a minute. I've been here 18 years. I've been here 25 years. Guys, 18,000 people in one day. This is coming from the guy that came to our event. Now, if he was hungry enough to come to our event and after working a 12-hour shift, watch this. And I did the math, guys. If he was working a 12-hour shift, he worked 6 to 6. And he was hungry enough to come to our event because he was just that hungry to realize, wait a minute. <laughs> and if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Thomas, I think you did tell him. <laughs> Don't you think you next? <laughs> Wait a minute. The one that got doing the chopping is inevitably getting ready to be chopped. Oh, let me get out of there. Let me, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry I'm doing too much. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got to get this off my chest. It's Friday. Oh my God. I got to let this off my chest. I've been holding this since Tuesday. I don't understand this, guys. You mean to tell me this guy's an army? It was on his chest so bad to actually tell us his situation and his job. And he's sitting in an ACN meeting knowing that residual income is best for him and his family because he just had to cut 18,000 people. Hold on, guys. He said eight. I, I didn't understand. I said maybe he said 1,800. He said 18,000 worldwide. Now, it came out of his mouth now. And I'm sitting here thinking, what in the world is going on? All I'm saying to you guys, we glad we got a vehicle that we don't have to look at life like that. All we have to do is mash the gas. In other words, rev up the engines a little bit. I know the international's coming. I get it. But what are you going to do before the international come and after the international is over with? Let's not get high. Let's start today, March the 1st. And let's end it March the 31st on a good note. Another IBO, another customer, peaking the whole nine. And let's get to the international with momentum. With momentum. Let's leave the international with momentum. Because there's no need for us to post all these pictures in WhatsApp. I'm on my way. I'm here. And you taking a picture with all these RVPs and SVPs. And that's all you did was come for a photo op? <laughs> that's all you did was come for a photo op? I would take it personal, guys. I'm not going to get on a plane, get on a train, get in an automobile for a photo op. That's not happening. I'm going to have momentum before I get there. I'm going to have momentum while I'm sitting in the chair clapping and everybody else up. And I'm going to have momentum when it's over with. So at the end of the month, I'm in all-out massive action because I decide to push the envelope because I didn't want to be somebody waiting on them to fire me. I didn't want to be somebody waiting on somebody to give me something. I didn't want to be nobody trading time for dollars and letting them give me a tip called a paycheck. And I'm going to leave you guys with this. Got in the Uber the other night. Guy was driving me to my destination. I started to peek it. Simple conversation. Is this all you do? Yada, yada, yada. He started to tell me, he said, oh, I just lost my job. I'm in between jobs right now. He said, I'm doing this on the side. I said, oh, really? He said, really? I said, well, I do a little something in my business partners. I said, man, you'd be great because he was telling me, you know, he's ran several businesses. He's owned several businesses. I said, you may need to check this out. He said, what is it? I said, let me get your number. I said, because in my business, I believe documentation will always be the conversation. Watch that part. Watch that part. Nugget drop. Nugget drop. Documentation will always be the conversation. I'm not going to have you get me on hold talking about what we do because now I didn't gave you the good prematurely. I want to be able to wet your pattern a little bit, let you give me your number, so that way when I give you my information, then I can let it be in your lap. That's how you do that, guys. And usually what I do is I send them the video, Tony Cooper's video. Then I'll back it up with my website. So that way the video backs me up. And then they see the structure of it, right? This guy ended up telling me, he said, well, what is it? I still wouldn't tell him what it was. So I said, well, I don't want to do that, sir. I said, number one, it'll take a little too much time. And uh, we about two minutes from my stop. I said, so. You know, it makes no sense for me to tell it to you. I said, but I'll send you the information, right? Two things happen. They give you the information. That's a good thing. Worst case scenario, you got a business card. Drop it and you're gone. You always have to have a backup. It always has to be a backup in place. That means you're doing business intentionally. If you don't have a card on you, you should. Because you're doing business intentionally. Because worst case scenario, what if they get a service from you? Customer acquisition. But what if they pass the information to somebody else? 
that's going to be your power play because they're going to get on your information because they know it. But once they see that credibility on there, once they see your face on there, once they see that information, once they see everything they need to see, now they're scratching their head. I like for them to scratch their head because now they know we got a platform that sit 31 years strong. So worst case scenario, I get their business as a customer. Best case scenario, they're inquisitive about being my business partner. At the end of the day, guys, we call that a win-win situation. So if you can do all of that in a nutshell and be consistent with it, trust me, guys, you're going to have a thriving, consistent business. Hope to see all you guys at the International. When you see me, let's talk. Thank you, Mr. Thomas.